Uh, it's been a while since I've managed to play some matches online just for fun. Um, I figured I would do that. Uh, I wanted to play some online matches and just play some cami on ranked for a little bit. But then I, I might actually switch over to M. Bison and try him out and get thoroughly destroyed because I just want to see what it is about that character that's so bad. And I've never used Bison against people before and it'll be kind of an adventure. But um, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, play some online matches here. You can see uh, I'm mostly using Kami. And uh, last time I streamed myself playing online, it did not go very well. I was using Kami, I got salty a bunch of times, I was having problems winning with her. And so uh, I kept playing Kami, and I've gotten a lot better with her, and I understand her a little bit more. So what I want to do is play some matches and actually kind of talk about some of the things that I learned about Kami and how I got a little bit better and the things that made me realize uh, what's good about this character. Originally, I thought she was really bad. Now I think she's really good. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Unicorn Trap, for the follow. Uh, but, you know, I used to think Cammy was bad, now I think she's really good. So I have, uh, gonna play some online matches and show basically kind of a mindset what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, trust me, uh, I'm, I'm very, oh, really, so, so, uh, Sika Leo, your, my salty is very similar to your salty, huh? <laughs> Dude, Barkan, I would love to do Guilty Gear. Unfortunately, the Guilty Gear online rank doesn't work very well. I'd have to set up some lobbies. So at some point in time, I might try to set up some lobbies with a couple of guys like Kugi and those guys, and then we can play uh, a little bit. Uh, and hopefully I can start streaming some Guilty Gear. But uh, I'm going to sit here and do some uh, Street Fighter for now. Uh, the talk show is not canceled. Oh, shoot. I didn't change the title of anything. You are right. That's why everybody's so confused. So let's do something. Uh, uh, casual Thursdays. Street Fighter V Online. There we go. Featuring Jay Chensor. Talk. That's not a gaming talk show. Let's get ourselves to playing some Street Fighter V. There we go. Update. There we go. Alright, so the title has been changed. You can uh, refresh and uh, see the better title now. Uh, I will be trying to stream X-Mania again this year, which of course is called x uh, Griffin. I will definitely try to do that. So, um, uh, I definitely will be checking out KOF 14 at some point in time, Shogundo. Uh, not uh, at this particular moment, but I will at one point. But uh, I just wanted to play a bunch of Kami online and just kind of show you guys. And I really, one of the things that I really want to do, I was watching Sejam play Killer Instinct online uh, on stream on our channel at one point in time. And he was really good about reading the chat and, and, and playing online at the same time. And I'm really, really bad at that. So I want to see if I can uh, also learn to play and also, you know, uh, uh, interact with the chat as much as possible. So uh, let me do something here. Can I zoom in? The, how do I zoom in? There we go. Zoom. Control plus. That's what it is. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. Um, yeah, so Justin's really good at that too. So I'm gonna see if I can practice that. But not only that, but I, I, I want to make it a little bit more helpful. I want to make it a little more educational to people on, um, you know, basically how I'm trying to approach matches. The last couple of times I've played online, I've tried doing that, and. Um, it's really easy just to be playing and then just forget that you're on stream and you forget to talk and all these things like that. So I'm going to do the, why is everyone saying this is from three years ago? Uh, what is going on here? Time paradox? I don't know. Did I accidentally type uh, the wrong days or something like that? I, I, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play some online matches. And um, one of the things that I've gotten really good with Kami at now is um, one of the things that's really helped me is I've really under started understanding her frames and everything like that. So, for example, uh, ending combos into drills, if the opponent quick rises, you get an automatic 
meaty if you do a dash into a standing medium punch, even if they do, for example, a uh, wake up three frame normal. Like so, right? So if I set Mika to do that, and I turn that on, so if I sweep her, she'll get up with a standing light punch. Off of quick rise, you'll beat her, and then you'll be able to, you know, get a full combo off of that. So this is the one thing that I, you know, I, I, I started understanding that, so I started understanding getting into the corner. I started trying to implement shimmies into my game a little bit more, you know, even in situations where I didn't feel comfortable with it. Um, I started finding out that I'm still too scared to commit to Fierce Drill even when I get the proper shimmy. So what I'm actually going to try to do now is convert myself to doing a shimmy where I walk forward and back and then do stand medium punch because then stand medium punch will still combo into low forward if I get a counter hit, right? So if I turn counter hit to on, for example, like let's say I do this. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So let's say I do walk forward and then back, and then I can get the combo that way. So instead of just committing to fierce drill, I'm going to try shimmies with stand medium punch. So boom, walk up, walk back, stand medium punch, low forward in the drill. That's what I'm going to try to do with shimmies instead. So that's one of my goals for today. Um, that is what I'm going to try to do today is incorporate uh, the alternate shimmy, which is a stand medium punch low forward so I can hit confirm the shimmy. The other thing that I really want to try to integrate into my gameplay today, and, and, and this is already kind of an interesting example. So I already have a basic game plan with Cami down. I understand what I'm supposed to do with her. I understand how I'm supposed to pressure with footsies and all these things like that. But, you know, watching a guy like Xiao Hai, he's really started implementing point blank stand light kick. This is a really, really powerful tool right here. Um, if you do standing light kick here into immediate throw, oh, not on counter hit. Hang on a second, sorry, let me turn on counter hit. Let me turn on all guard here. So if you do standing light kick in the throw, it's really fast. And I have her set to uh, recovery throw, sorry, hang on a second. So it's really fast. Like, it's, it's deceptively smooth how well this connects. Standing light kick into throw. And this is something Xiao Hai has really started implementing. So he'll do, for example, like jump, light kick, light kick, throw. Or he'll do uh, cross up, light kick, light kick, throw. And the reason why this is really powerful is because if you get the opponent into expecting light kick in the throw like this, so this is a really, really good sequence. Once you start getting people used to that, the next level of that that Xiao Hai starts to do is stand light kick low Crouching light kick, standing light punch into drill. So watch, I will turn off no guard. So, so let's say they block that move, right? So that's what they do instead. So they do standing light kick into crouching light kick into drill. Because what happens is people get so used to light kick in the throw that they want to counter throw or jump away, do the OS throw tech. So if I do, that'll catch them before they jump and then I can hit confirm into drill. So this is a really, really good sequence here uh, for Cami. So stand light kick turns into a really powerful tool and it's something that I actually don't really use a lot. Now if I put them on random guard here and I do stand light kick, you can actually hit confirm two buttons like that. You see, so she blocked it so I'm not gonna drill. But if she gets hit, I'm gonna drill. Whoops. Not gonna drill. Got hit, I'm gonna drill. Blocked, not gonna drill. Not gonna drill. Got hit and I missed it. So I missed the hit confirm. Okay, got the hit confirm that time. That's why this technique is really, really powerful because I can not only bait them, but if they actually do continue to low block, not expecting the throw, I can confirm and not drill if they block. So for example, if I set her to guard all and she's crouching and I do this, I don't have to drill and I won't put myself in a dangerous situation. However, if I do catch her, I can confirm into a drill and keep going. So this is one thing that in my game I have not implemented a lot of is this close range light kick into throw. The other one I want to try, like I said, is the walk back forward 
standing medium punch in the low forward shimmy. Because normally when I do the shimmy, I walk back and forth and I do fierce in the drill. But a lot of the times I can't confirm the fierce in the drill. So if they block it, I drill and then I die. Or I hit them with the fierce and I don't cancel. So I want to add in a little bit of hit confirmability into my shimmy. So there you go. That's basically the goal of what I'm trying to do today. Those are the two things that I want to implement into my game. So I'm going to play online. And yes, I'm going to try to win, obviously. But winning is not the main goal. The main goal for me is to find the opportunities to implement stand light kick and then find the opportunities to learn how to implement the stand medium punch shimmy frame trap as opposed to doing raw fierce in the drill. So that's kind of the mindset in which I'm coming into this online session. I'm not here to win and body people and gain points and whatever like that. I'm actually just going to play uh, as uh, and, and try to learn and try to put new elements into my game so this is kind of one of the things that you want to learn how to do and why can't I get a fight request hang on a second I might not be long logged in yeah exactly LOH727 in the chat says it's so hard trying to implement new tech into your gameplay I start by trying to do the new stuff then I start losing so I forget all about it to win. And that's, that is where the concern comes from. And that's why you have to go into these online sessions with the mindset that winning is secondary. You're going to lose trying to implement these new things, and that's okay. If you're only worried about points, if you're only worried about all those things, absolutely you're going to forget. You're going to not put all those into there. And it's 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 not what you should be concentrating on. So you're going to watch me play. I'm probably going to lose a bunch, especially if I decide to switch characters a little bit later on. But uh, that's the goal. That's the goal, and I have no problem with that. So I'm going to go ahead and cause myself to lose some points. I don't mind, because I just want to learn these new things in here. So that is one of the hardest things to do. One of the hardest things to do when you play online is not caring about losing because, my God, it's, it hurts when you lose. And it's like, I hate this. In fact, I even have a whole series. I have like a, a, a first attack I did a long time ago called Losing Sucks. And it really is just kind of about that concept that it's really hard to get over the fact that you don't want to lose. So I'm going to play some matches online. I'm going to do some online rank matches. And also, by the way, if you guys play online, I highly re recommend leaving connection status at 3 to 5 and changing battle confirmation to ask. If you want all 5 bar matches and you set this to 5 only, you're going to get matched up to the same like 3 people or 4 people like constantly. I don't know how their filtering system works. It's not very good. If you set it to 3 to 5 and then ask, and then you click apply settings when you get the match request you can check the bars and you'll actually get a lot more five bar people that way than you are oops hang on a second you get a lot more five bar people that way uh, than you would actually setting it to five bars some people say four to five bars should be good but uh, I, I, I like it at three to five it gives me a good variety and honestly I never play anybody with three bars it's weird. If you set it to five only, you'll get like four people. If you set it to three to five, you'll get like tens and like almost a hundred different people at five bars that you can pick and choose. You'll get a few three bars. You just refuse them. That's it. So let us switch myself to some cami. Um, let's do the Capcom Pro Tour outfit. And let us put ourselves in the Ring of Destiny. Oh, where's the Ring of Destiny? Oh, dang, that's weird that they put it up here. Very strange organization. And in fact, I'm going to change my title, except I cannot read anything. So Capcom Cup 2016, Capcom Pro Tour 2016. I'm going to change it to that. Uh, what is Fighter Pro? Oh, this stuff. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to apply that. So now I'm Cami. Now I've got everything all set up. 
Oh, that stage has lag, huh? Okay. Let us change the stage then. Let us change the stage to... Uh, you know what? I really like this high roller coast... Is the high roller casino also bad as well? Uh, let's do that one. All right, so now let's 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 get some online. So like I said, my goals now are to implement a different shimmy. Whoops. A different shimmy, and the other goal is to try to implement light kick throw into my game a little bit more, and light kick crouch, light kick stand jab into drill. Those are my main two main goals of playing online today. So here we go. So now I get to check five bars. I'll go ahead and battle him. So, let's see, uh, no, actually I had no idea about the Ring of Destiny. I found out about the Ring of Destiny the same time everybody else found out about the Ring of Destiny. So, uh, let's go ahead and play some online. And like I said, I'm going to try to talk about talk out loud as I play this. As I said, I'm not very good at it, and this is something that I'm trying to learn to do and get better at. Talk while I'm playing. Okay, so this is Ryu. So very uh, standard fight here that it, um, it's probably going to be. So um, I'm probably going to approach it by just starting off seeing if he's an aggressive Ryu, seeing if he's a defensive Ryu, if he wants to go fireball game, or if he wants to rush in on me. So I'm probably going to start this one not by doing anything, just by walking back, back dashing, and just seeing how he's going to approach the fight. So let's do that really quick. Fight. Okay, so he's trying to walk forward. So he's aggressive, and he's already jumped in once. So I know this is an aggressive Ryu. So, yeah, see, now he dashed forward in here. Okay, so I already know this is an aggressive Ryu, and he's probably going to try to jump at me a bunch of times as well. Ooh, okay. So now what I know I have to do is play a little bit more defensive. Good block on that uppercut, and I'm dead. All right. So now I know that this is an aggressive Ryu, right? So what I have to look forward to, what I have to look out for is the forward dash and the jumps. So what I'm gonna do is poke out more buttons and stop him from dashing forward. So now he's gonna jump as expected. Oops, that was too slow. Oh, neutral jumps. Neutral jumps are dangerous. Is that something you have to take care of? Oops, okay, he's gonna probably jump at me really soon. Alright, so there it is. Oops, too close. So he probably wants to dash at me again, so I'm gonna try to keep him out. Cross him up. Okay, he did the back roll. So now I know he's a back roller. So now that I know he's a back roller, if I hit him with the drill, and I expect him to back roll, I have to delay my standing medium punch so that I hit him off of the back roll instead. Back dash, get out of the way. So again, he's an aggressive Ryu, not a fireball Ryu. Oh, nice. Get the throw. Throw. I really need to... I like the point blank EX fireballs that he throws. They're really good. Oops. Oh, that's that stupid mix up. Oh, he's gonna do some big damage here. Okay. Playing very defensive now, so now I'm trying to bait. Oops, that was not what he meant to do. But you see, now I delayed it. I delayed my standing strong because he did the back roll last time. And so this time I delayed the standing strong and I'm able to hit him out of that. Now you see, this is a great example. First round, he just completely blew me up. He just blew me up. But because I did the analysis on how he played, just like that, I was able to take two rounds, right? So this is, again, this is one of those things. You really have to read the opponent. If you're not reading the opponent, if you're not playing against the player, you're not doing anything for yourself. See, he's still doing the dash forward thing, and he occasionally throws fireballs. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because if I get hit by a fireball or I block a fireball, really, what does it mean? What does it mean? He has to get me annoyed, and uh, that's not happening right now. So I'm just going to try to get in there occasionally. Okay, counter hit. Now he's probably going to back roll. He did. And I get that again. Is he going to back roll again? He did. So he, now he got the uppercut. So now I know he's in uppercut mode. Oh, I 
I gotta blow up those neutral jumps. Okay, back roll again. Oh, okay, no uppercut that time. Oops, and he got hit by that. And if he played differently on the second round, that means he's a good player. That means he would have adjusted and changed up and threw me off and I would have lost. And that's where some top players are good. You'll see people like Daigo, they actually change up in between rounds. They'll go from aggressive to defensive all of a sudden. And that's what makes them super good. Oh my god, he's just gonna uppercut in the super. Good stuff. Oh wow, really? Again, I, 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 so if he neutral jumps in the corner, I'm gonna uppercut him, because that's what that's what people like to do in the corner. Okay, so he's gotten the throw now. Nice empty jump. Okay, good stuff. All right, so uh, let's see what happens this round here. Now the interesting thing is I haven't really had a chance to implement the things that I wanted to implement because. I haven't been able to get my rush down in on him. Hmm. Yeah, again. Oh no, he dropped it. Oh wow! Fancy times! Oh, wrong one! V trigger, so that's it. I'm I'm gonna get done after that. Yeah, I do need to use a standing medium punch anti-air, but that's one of my weaknesses. I'm really, really, really bad at beating uh, uh, jumps. I'm really, really bad at beating jumps, especially that neutral jump. Neutral jump is really effective in this game, but it should never work on Cami because her um, roundhouse uppercut has the range to beat. Oh, sorry, that was me? Oh, did we go in or did I accidentally quit? Oh, no! My bad, sorry, dude. Shoot, I wanted to play him another game. I wanted to play another game, but I wasn't sure. I hate the fact that that UI, I can't tell exactly if it's selected or not. I, I, okay. Well, unfortunately, I don't get to play him a little bit more I wanted to to see if I could adjust to the stuff that he was doing. So, um, let's find out who I play next. But again, so this is kind of the, the way that you want to approach a match. You want to feel like you're understanding what it is that, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm a rage quitter, dude. So there you go. You don't, you can't take my points. I'm so mad. But, um. <laughs> but again, the interesting thing was because he played defensively, I wasn't really able to get my rushdown game going. And because I wasn't able to get the rushdown going, I really wasn't able to test out all the things that I wanted to. Every time I tried to hit him with the cross up, he managed to anti air jab me. So that's fine. That's fine. So uh, let's just move on to the next match and see if I can implement those things. I didn't really have a chance. I was playing neutral. I was playing. Uh, footsies with the guy, so I wasn't able to play the the in close stuff that I want to do. And I was playing him, and I forgot that those are things that I wanted to implement, just like uh, LOH mentioned in the chat. So I have to hammer it into my head that these are things that I need to implement into my game. I need to establish light kick in the throw. I need to stash it so I can start doing standing light kick, low jab, stand jab, drill. Now. Alex is a tough one. Playing footsies against Alex is not recommended with Cammy because you will get bodied. You have to take advantage of the fact that once you get in on him, so he's going to be a good character for me to do these uh, shimmy and the uh, stand light kick throw tests. But once you get in on him, you have to rush him down. Alex has no good wake up, but footsies wise, his crouching medium punch blows Cammy up for free. It's really tough to deal with that move. So I am going to. Play a okay, he's staying away. Okay, he's not using that button, so I'm gonna see. Does he know standing 
light punch anti-air. He did not anti-air me that time, so that might mean I might be able to get some free jumps in on him. Oh, okay. That was interesting. Huh. Okay. Too slow. I did that too slow. Stand light kick into, but I saw there that... Oh, dang it. <laughs> I really thought he was going to stomp. Oh no, the rollback! Okay, that's a good button. He just really wants to crouch fierce me. He really wants to crouch fierce me. Oops, I missed that link. And I just missed my cross up. Okay. Alright, interesting. Very, very defensive, not moving. So, if he's going to be defensive and not hitting a lot of buttons and just waiting to crouch fierce me, this is where I have to learn to dash forward and go after him. Okay, good block. You have to try once in a while. Ow, why did that do so much damage? Okay, I'm dead. No, drop your combo. Oh no, you messed up! No! Okay, so he's always in throw mode. So if I can get that again. Oh, he blocked that time. Okay, interesting. I really hate that ender. All right. Yeah, he's this guy is playing really defensive and very slow. I'm very surprised by that, but uh, let's see what let's 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 keep trying to go at him. Let's see what happens. Whoops. Okay, now he's jumping a lot for some strange reason. I can punish that. I should punish that. So watch. If he does, oh, he did. Oh, the rollback. I did hit him with the crouch light kick, but then it rolled back, so I got confused. Now I'm going to try a shimmy here. Oops. Oh, nice block. Oh, you could have did better than that. Wow, that's all he wants to do is crouch fierce. Okay, okay. There you go. There you go. All he wants to do is crouch fierce. Okay, so what that basically means is he's always looking for that. And I need to start mixing up dive kicks in the air to catch his crouch fierce. Or when he's playing at that range, when he's at my ma maximum jump distance, then I need to dash forward at him. And so that way he's caught off guard because he's always looking at uh, the anti-air. So he's gonna be looking at the anti-air. See, now I can dive kick and kind of mess him up. But see, now I can dash in on him because he's always looking for that anti-air. I'm at the jump distance. See how I'm getting some free dashes now, right? Oh, but then there's that crouch medium punch of death. Ow. Ow. Oh, what? Sadness. Right. What are you going to try? What are you going to try here, buddy? What are you going to try? See? He's just doing that all day. That's all he's looking for. I can punish that, and I'm not punishing it. That's bad on me. Wow, he did a wake up super. He did a wake up super. He did a wake up super. And I will eat that gloriously. That is my bad there. Do not jump back. Do not jump back. Yeah, what makes this fight really hard is it's hard to control Alex at this range because his crouching medium punch is such a problem. Oh wow, he did it when I walked forward. Oh my god, okay. I'm actually pretty baffled by this Alex right now. I'm 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm really confused by the way that this guy's playing. Oh, I missed my meaty. Oh, that's not punishable. Okay, okay. EX1 is uh, good. E EX1 is good. So yeah, okay, so here's another thing too that I should just try to talk about. Is that, you know, a lot of times if you play, try to play as logically as you can, sometimes you run into people who do not play logical either. <laughs> and so you're gonna get beat up. You're gonna try to make good decisions and you're gonna get blown up for it. The one thing that you have to recognize is uh, you have to understand that not they're not necessarily going to make the logical decision. And so when you lose to that, you can't be mad. You can't be frustrated when you lose to that kind of play. You have to be like, okay, he was doing things that, in my opinion, didn't really make much sense. And I'm going to get blown up for it. So, uh, But yeah, so we'll, we'll see what, I mean, that's the thing is you can't get mad. You can't think to yourself, oh man. I played it wrong, I'm mad, like, I can't ever win. You can't really get mad at those kind of situations. You just have to understand that the way that the person was playing is not what you were expecting, so you have to make that proper adjustment into it, so. Uh, these are not excuses at all. I'm not making excuses at all. He beat me fair and square. But the problem was, I was trying to approach the match in a way that I should not have approached it. I was trying to play it I was trying to implement a lot of different things that I was not going to be able to get away with. So these are not excuses at all. I lost absolutely fair and square. And in fact, when you play in tournaments, you're going to run into that kind of a player a lot. You're going to run into a lot of players that aren't going to do what you expect them to do. So when you play early in tournaments, you're going to lose early in these tournaments. And it's going to be frustrating. You're like, why can't I ever do this? And you feel like you play better against better players than you do uh, against, you know, less strong, less solid fundamental kind of players. And so what ends up happening then is that you get frustrated, you get upset, and then you feel like you can't ever do anything but go into 0-2 in a tournament. You really do have to learn how to adjust your mindset between playing against really strong players and you also have to learn how to play against players that ne aren't necessarily fundamentally uh, the strongest of players, so. Um, whoops, did I, I just missed one. Oh no, someone followed, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so that's the thing is, you know, getting beaten by unsound button mushes and wake up supers, uh, it happened in Ultra Street Fighter 4, it happened a lot. But trust me, in the way that Street Fighter 4 just developed eventually is we all got good at our meaty timings, we all got good at our set play, and after you get good at the set play, then all that stuff doesn't matter anymore. So that's the problem. And um, when you... In, in, in Street Fighter 4, there was just a lot more things you could get away with. And so it wasn't even necessarily that the game is smarter. In a weird way, the fact that it's harder to beat that kind of player in Street Fighter V means you have to think a little bit harder. In Street Fighter IV, it was very easy to go very um, autopilot-y. And in that case, if you think of it from that point of view, that means Street Fighter IV is actually less strategic than Street Fighter V, right? Uh, the right way, so dislike the idea of a correct way to play. So there is no correct way to play. I do not believe that there is a correct way to play any character in this game. It is very easy to put your own stamp on it. However, there is logical ways to play. For example, do a meaty throw. Do another meaty throw. Okay, I've done two meaty throws, so obviously I should stop doing meaty throws because he's going to expect a meaty throw. So the logic thing is now do a meaty attack instead of a meaty throw. So what happens in that situation, unfortunately, though, is that be if the opponent also thinks logically, then they're going to think that you're not going to throw again. So they're going to block. So in that case, the third throw, which is an illogical thing to do, is the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to do. 
And this is the kind of thing that you have to do. You have to adjust, you have to figure out, and you have to get all this information right away. When I played the Alex player, um, I didn't get the information fast enough. In fact, it took me a couple of times jumping at him before I realized what was going on, that he was really, really triggered with the, um, stand, with the crouch fierce. He was just ready to do that all the time. Uh, Justin Wong wins when it looks like he doesn't do anything special because his footsies are just amazing. He knows what the opponent wants to do. He has reads for days, and I don't understand how he does it. If I did, then I would obviously be a strong player as well. Now, I'm standing at his jump distance, because I want him, oh really? That wasn't good. Okay, so he's an uppercutter. Oh no, I missed my combo, bad times. That's fine. Oh, really? Whoa, holy crap. We've got some uppercut madness here. Jump, jump at me, jump at me. Okay, never mind. Okay, that's gonna work the first time, like almost every single time. Oh, okay, watch him and throw. That was good. That threw me off. It's good. It's good. Oh, okay, I was expect. I was trying to wait for a fireball. I was trying to wait for a fireball. Okay. All right. So uppercutty can, uppercutty can. Let's get ready for this. And I've got to really just work on my anti airs. And he's doing a lot of V skills into me. I didn't go. Oh, he did wake up throw. You're the best, Ken. This Ken is the best. Oh, this Ken is the best. Oops. So lots of V skill run up. So I've got to intercept him with low forwards. Yep, see, there we go. So now I gotta poke a lot with standing medium kick because now I am expecting him to do a lot of V skills. So that's what I have to do. I have to interrupt his run forward. And I'm gonna eat fireballs. Like I said, I don't care about eating fireballs. And he's very aggressive. Okay, yep, yeah, okay. Okay, I implemented the new shimmy, which I wanted to do. Oh, I didn't have the super. Really? Okay. Okay, so um, I tried to implement the shimmy, but he didn't fall for it. So now what I'm going to just do is throw a lot. I'm going to throw a lot. So, Dude, he's not even like a VF character. Like, honestly, um, my reaction to crush countering DPs is super bad with Cami. For some reason, I never remember to hit stand roundhouse, because roundhouse is not a button I ever touch with Cami. So I, I do, I have to learn how to crush counter that for sure. But honestly, this Ken doesn't even look like a Virtua Fighter costume. It looks like he is the guy, did he just not challenge me again? Oh, okay, there he goes. He looks like a normal bad guy in like Streets of Rage. Like he's the guy that you run into in the street. Yep, see, he wants to do that V skill, so. Ooh, nice, okay, okay. I did not mean to quick rise. Oh my god! This Ken is the best! I'm out of here. I need to build up some of that life. Okay, early V skill, so I'll be willing to spend that meter. Oh my god! Okay, I'm gonna wake up uppercut on him. Block, you can punish that, yeah, but nothing. Oh, I hate that that dive kick misses like that. That dive kick always goes over people's head. But yeah, I'm trying to learn to get the crush counter in there, so. All right, so what I need to do is I'm playing his game right now. I'm playing this mid-range game where he's like getting to run at me and all this other stuff. I need to play my game. No, wrong button, wrong button. See, I hate that it misses like that. That's one of the most frustrating things to me. Okay, so now he's scared of that. 
Alright. Whoa! Let's counter! Uh, yeah, pretty much. But see, now it's interesting because he's not Tatsu anymore. He's playing this game where he's trying to do step kick or or V skill and stuff, and I don't want to play that game with him. So I'm going to stay out of the range of it and let him come into range. Nice block. Okay, implementing that into my game that I want to. Oh, he did wake up uppercut. Got to learn. Do not dash forward with Kami after... Oh, smart. Okay. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so, he's trying to play that mid-range game, and I, I was buying into it. I was trying to figure out a way to stop it, but if he plays sort of pseudo-randomly with step kicks and overheads or V-skills, I'm gonna lose that battle. So what I did was I pushed myself out of that range so that when he step kicked in and whiffed, he now has recovery frames and I can go in on him. He could uppercut me, he could hurricane kick me randomly out of the middle of nowhere, and that's absolutely uh, very, very uh, plausible. That's something that, that he could totally do and beat me, and so I have to learn to adjust to that. But see, when I played that Ken in round one, I already established the fact that he was kind of... It wasn't, a, so like, the hard thing is, I don't want to insult anybody, like the Alex player, you know, I, I think he came into the chat, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm talking shit on him, I don't want to make it sound like I'm like, oh, this guy's not playing logical, he sucks, that's not what I'm trying to say, it's just, that's a style of play, that's a legit style of play. Let's take Marn, for example. Let's, let's put Marn into the highest, you know, he's the highest level illogical player that there is. He just does stuff that comes into his head. And that's why he's so dangerous. He's just particularly good at it. And when he touches you, he's always going to do a crap ton of damage. Now, if I sit here and say that Poon old Punko, if I say Marn, if I say those kind of players are random players, I'm not trying to insult them. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm saying that that's the style at which they play. So the Alex player that I fought, I'm not insulting him by saying thank you for the follow, by the way. I'm not insulting him by saying that he's really like, oh, he's illogical, he doesn't know how to play. That's not what I'm trying to say. I I'm just trying to evaluate the style of play that he's playing. So the Ken player that I played, first round right away, I was like, okay, he's not gonna be a particularly logical player, so I have to play it as safe as possible. Don't get into that footsie range where he has all the advantage with step kicks and overheads and thunder kicks and stuff. Get outside of that range and just take advantage of him being too aggressive. So let's find out what this Ken does. Is he a jumper's jumper? Yep, he is. And I was supposed to be back medium punch, not crouching medium punch. Alright, he's trying to bait me into uppercutting. Okay, good stuff. We got some V reversals going on. Alright, I'm out of the corner. Is he gonna jump at me again? Yep, there we go. Oh. oh, I was whiffing a button, so I couldn't punish that. That's punishable. Uppercut, yep. I am a scrub! Oh, okay, I somehow lived. Ow! That was not what I was expecting. Why is that so hard to hit? Why is why is Roundhouse Hurricane over your head like the most impossible thing to hit? Uh, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, he's playing defensive. Okay, gotta punish those neutral jumps. Gotta punch us those neutral jumps. If not with, um... If not with, um, uppercut, then at least with that standing roundhouse. Okay, so he likes the Tatsu. This is a Tatsu kind of guy. 
Okay, okay. This guy is a uh, Tatsu guy, so let's keep that in mind. Let's see if I could jump and do a bunch of damage right away, because he wants to jump at me, probably. Alright. Okay, now he's dashing. So I'm going to throw out more buttons. There we go. Implementing that into my game. Jump at me. I was just waiting for that. See, I, I figured I could frustrate him into jumping me if I started playing a better ground game against him. Okay, implementing that again. Yeah, you want to dash forward, I know it. You want to dash forward again. Yeah, there you go, stand light kick in the throat. Very, very useful tool. So I was just going to keep doing it and seeing if he got to the point where he would counter it. But see, here's the interesting thing. So I've done it three times to him, right? The first two times I did it to him, I was willing to keep going because they happened in situations where I don't feel like they registered in their head. Now this is the interesting part. This is that next level fighting game skill. Now that I've killed him with standing light kick in the throw, he's going to be thinking I need to take a throw after that standing light kick. I have planted that into his head. So now I'm going to switch to the crouching light kick instead. If I get an opportunity. Okay, good stuff. See, right there. And I got him. He tried to tech the throw, but unfortunately I just dropped the combo. But otherwise, that would have worked. Whoa, what am I doing? I am scrubbing up right now. All right. He wants to dash forward again, because that was working for him before. Oh, too far away. I have to confirm into low crouching medium kick is what I need to do. Okay. Oh, that was not the interaction that I wanted. I did not want the interaction. But the interesting thing is, conditioning him is conditioning him, but I killed him with it. So I, I, I have a read that he like actually took note of it. Okay, so he blocked that time. So now I can probably go back into the throw again, right? So, ooh, wake up. I'm going to land on that fireball. Jump at me, you know you, okay, he's dashing a lot. Okay, that's fine. I gotta stop doing that. Hmm. Okay, so he's not an uppercutty Ken. I like that though, that's good, that's good. Now you're gonna dash up again because that's what you wanna do. Which means, yep, I get the low fear. See, so again, I'm reading the way that this Ken wants to play. He's a very dashy Ken. I, after I uppercut supered him, you see how Uppercut super him in that first game? Even though that was the first game and that was gone, it made him stop jumping. You notice that he wasn't jumping at all, right? So because he stopped jumping, now I'm going to concentrate on stopping him dashing forward because that's what he was doing. He was always trying to attack from there. And what's that alert right there? Is that an alert? Someone does Iron God? Is he trying to play me? I think Iron God wants to play me. So, uh, uh, so wake up, crouching light punch, counter hit into stand hard punch or crouch medium punch. Um, well, uh, thank you, Charlie. I don't know if that's what you mean, but I'm not sure what Charlie is up to here. I'm glad I am here for your amusement, regardless if it is the way that uh, I'd like you to be amused or not amused. Yeah, someone invited me. That was Iron God. He's a SoCal player. Uh, he's a Marvel player, actually, if I'm not mistaken. He's the guy who sent uh, Ray Ray into loser's bracket uh, first round at the High Rollers Pasadena tournament. So uh, I'm not... Someone denied me. Uh, right now, I'm not going to do invitations for now. I'm going to go ahead and just stay on rank because I, I really want to kind of show how you want uh, you approach your, these online matches because this is where most people are playing. And I really, really want to get people to understand 
how to get better at this game. And when you do play someone and you lose, how do you adjust it and get to the point where you can actually beating uh, that you can actually beat somebody? So, um, uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Pandal. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I was just beating up Mika because she has a really good Capcom uh, color. She has a really, really good color there. So I actually love Mika to death, dude. I'm not beating. I, I love Mika, and I wish I played her more. But she's just not the style that I that I that I'm good at. I'm not good at being able to play that kind of uh, mental game where we, she has to be brave. She has to be brave. She has to throw out whiffing low fierces. She has to be uh, willing to mix up between the towards fierce and the command throws. I'm really bad at that, and I'm fighting against another Kami. I'm terrible at this match. Uh, I'm very, very terrible at this match. So uh, let's see what happens here, because uh, Kami's like to go crazy because they have the impression that that's what she's supposed to do. Yeah, not, the dive kicks are not very safe in this game, unfortunately. Now, okay, so she definitely wants to get in with that, with the, with the, um, she definitely wants to get in a lot with a hooligan into, into dive kick, so that's just something I've got to watch out for. Oh my god, I'm too slow. Yeah, you thought I was going to uppercut again, right? Oh, my cross-up is so bad. Oh, I missed my timing on that. Am I dead? I'm dead. I missed the timing on my meaty stand light kick. So that's my fault. No problem. I lost that one. I will totally accept that one. That was 100% my fault. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with losing that round. You can't be mad at that. You can only be mad at yourself. That you just need to get better at that. So. I really got to stop just sitting there and staring at that, like, and then getting myself killed. Oops, oh, what a terrible punish. Oh, wake up light kick. Okay, good to know, good to know. Lots of wake up light kicks. Okay, we gotta watch out for that. Yep, see, I can't let that rock. I can't let that, oh my God. Okay, 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 I like it, I like it. I like it. I like what you're trying to do here. I like what you're trying to do here. But you know how I'm going to kill you? Oops, I missed it. Oh, man, I really want to kill him in this funny way. Oh, I didn't get a chance to do it. I missed it. Missed it. Missed it. Okay, uh, back to this round. Back to this round. Let's see what happens here. He's not very good at anti-airing. I've noticed that. What is wrong? Oh my god, what is. Don't! I do kick! Dude, whenever rollback comes, it throws me off a lot. again I don't care that there was rollback I, I believe in giving everybody their two games no matter whether I win or lose so like I said I have really tr I don't know why like my punish on blocking a drill is low strong low strong drill I should do standing medium punch standing medium punch crouching medium punch uh, okay okay very forward moving cami again so I'm gonna have to throw out more footsie buttons Get that throw again. Oh, dizzy, wow. Okay, let's try a shimmy. Let's try a shimmy, shall we? Oh, lag! Okay, alright, 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 alright,
Every time the lag comes up, it throws me off. I, I get like, my brain like gets disconnected on, on the lag, on, on the rollback lag, and it's really frustrating. Like it, it literally gets me to stop talking too. Oops, that was supposed to be a drill, like so. Oops. I should be able to get my jab out first when I do the EX dive kick. I'm not hitting jab fast enough. I should be plus in that situation. Oh, where's my... Yeah, you're gonna hit a button there for sure. God, I can't let that keep going. I can't let him get away with that. Wow, really? That was not a confirm or anything. He just did it. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, sure, more power to you. Okay, see, I didn't throw, so it threw him off. Oh, he moves around a lot. It's really hard for me to jump at him, so I, I really need to stop, stop that. I need to play more of a... See, I should be able to get the initial hit there, but I'm not. Maybe I'm wrong on that frame data. Maybe I'm wrong on the frame data there. Yeah, see, there I got it. I think it just depends on height. It just depends on height. Okay, there we go. Probably just, uh, it just depends on height, so. You win. Yeah, you know what? I haven't played this account in a while, so I'm still in silver here. I'm, I'm in gold in my other account, but, um. That's just the way it works. <laughs> uh, shimmy basically is when you make them block a move and it make it look like you're about to throw them, then back up out of throw range. So let's see if I can get a shimmy on this person. But like I said, I've just been having trouble. Oh my god, he threw my crouch, my standing medium punch. So something to note. Okay, he's really bad at stopping that. And I'm really bad at stopping that. Let's do it too. Oh my god, the rollback is real. What is going on? I can't tell what's going on. Oh my god. Alright, now I'm just trying to wait for him to do something that he kills himself. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. Dude, Smurf accounts are nice, to be honest with you. I actually... It just, it's just a good way to play and relax. But now I'm sitting on a lot of meter. Let's see if I can just hit him with something that goes into super. Okay, so he teched it now. So now... See, I can do that. Whoops. Okay, but he came after me. That's fine. Expecting an uppercut. Oh, whoa! I did the wrong combo! I was supposed to do the medium one. Oh, I was supposed to do the medium one. I am sad face. Oops, okay, smart. Not doing anything. Okay, smart. Okay, so there's a problem right there is that after I do my standing light kick, if he hits buttons, then apparently he will beat my crouching, uh, my crouching light kick. So that's something to note about that tactic that I'm trying to implement. It doesn't work particularly well. Oof. Oops, that was back strong. God, I did it again. Shoot. Uppercut into the roundhouse one works. So the reason why roundhouse drill into the super... Oh, really? Really? Really, 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 really? Okay, so here's the thing. The reason why roundhouse drill into super didn't work is because roundhouse drill doesn't pop them up in the air. If I did the medium kick drill, it would have worked. 
If you're going to do roundhouse drill in the super, make sure you do it with the medium kick drill. So that is uh, the way that it works. Really? Yeah, but you know what? I don't care. I'm not playing for points, right? It doesn't even really matter. So, But yeah, he rage quit. He rage quit. Wow. He rage quit. And uh, I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, well, I mean, I hope he gets banned unless he's unless I'm one of the two that he rage quit on within this two hour period. Uh. But uh, so let me ask people in the stream right now. Um, how much is this narration of what I'm doing here and what my mindset is when I'm playing these games helping? Does it, uh, does it actually, does it make sense? Is it actually uh, getting people to see the game a little bit differently than they normally have before? Uh, Run, the way you don't care about points, just don't care about points. You know, just honestly, like, just let it happen. It's, 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 it's numbers. It's numbers. Who cares? Like, you know what? You, what, you, you, what you can do is, like, just grab a counter on the side, and every match you play, give yourself 10 points if you lose, and if you win, give yourself 100 points. And then you can watch that number rise. And if that makes you feel better, then that works, right? Just give yourself your own points and stuff. So, uh, all right, so here we go, a Ryu player. So um, I know nothing about this Ryu player. Last time I played Ryu, I started defensively. This time I'm going to play a little more aggressively. This is just my decision. I, this is just how I'm feeling. I'm not going to dash in, but I'm going to play this neutral game with him and see what he's going to do. Okay, so he backed off and threw a fireball. Let's see if he does again. Okay, so he's a more defensive Ryu player. Now I'm trying to read his fireball timing so I can get that and drop my combos because I'm a scrub. And I'm going to uppercut in the middle there because it's always good to test them the first time. Now when they jump from far away, I've got to learn to either roundhouse uppercut or standing roundhouse like that. And if I crush counter like that, I can get an uppercut, which is what I have to learn. So, okay, so now he's just trying random stuff. Okay. I can do that too, Wee! Jump at me, jump at me, I know you wanna jump at me. Okay, he dashed up. Okay, I got him to dash up. But see, he's playing very defensive, so now what I'm gonna try to learn to do is dash up myself. I'm going to try to be aggressive now because this is the hardest part of me. This is the part that I am the worst at when it comes to fighting games. Okay, I was baiting him into jumping backwards in the corner. I was waiting for that. You saw it. I walked up and waited. I saw him jump backwards in the corner once. So I was like, you know what? Do it again. Do it again. I dare you. Okay, double dash throw. I like it. He's being more aggressive. He's changed his play in, in between the rounds. So that's good. So now I have to play him a little bit different style, so. Nice, okay, so now he's teching that throw. Oops. Dash at me, dash at me, I know you want to. Okay, wake up, uppercut, I'll take it. No problem, not a lot of damage. I'll take it. Now, let's try an okie doke, shall we? That wasn't the okie doke. Oh, what the hell? Okay, fine. Okay, he's gonna mash uppercut. Fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's good, that's good. Whatever. Alright, let's do this again. Let's play him again. Let's 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 go back into this. Let's see how aggressive he is. Oh my god! Okay, he likes the uppercut once you start hitting him. Yep, see? Just like that. Okay, he's playing very defensive, so double dash, you see that? Trying to get myself to learn to play aggressive footsies. Oh my god! This Ryu is literally the best Ryu ever. Oh, the rollback! I saw the hit! I saw the hit! Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, there's a Vanguard event this weekend. There's a, a Vanguard event. 
Yeah, I know. I jumped over the fireball. I was supposed to punish him big, but I just really wanted to do an okie doke. So, but he's uh, he's obviously hitting a lot of uppercuts in between block strings and stuff like that. So now I just need to bait him out into into doing uppercuts and getting hit. So. Oh, absolutely should be losing the silvers. There's nothing wrong with See, that's the problem. If you spend your whole entire time thinking, man, this guy's a silver, I shouldn't be losing to him, you are going to be in bad shape. You're going to be, this is why you're going to get salty. And uh, this is why it's going to be hard for you to get better because you're going to get mad and upset every time you lose to these players when you really shouldn't. There's really nothing wrong losing to these kind of situations. Oh my god, he did wake up back fierce. Okay, this Ryu is either... Oh, that didn't work. This Ryu is either the worst or the best Ryu player I've ever seen in my life. Because he just did wake up, walk back towards fierce, which is the most amazing wake up I've ever seen in my life. Okay, he's still doing it. All right, I'm going to do it too. Ah, see, I always hit the wrong button. Always hit the wrong button. Every time I want a crush counter, I always hit I always hit standing fierce for some reason. I think I think standing fierce is my crush counter, but it's roundhouse. I have to remember that. Don't dash forward after throw. Don't dash forward. You're negative. Whoa, that beat my spin knuckle. Wow, really? Well, you can do better than that. I did it again. I just, I think it's standing fierce. It just has this really weird problem. I did it again. I did it again. God. I honestly can't explain it. I, I, I can't explain it, but that's how my brain works. My EX drill lost. Interesting. That was supposed to be an uppercut. Okay, okay. Roundhouse is the crush counter, not fierce. Roundhouse is the crush counter. Not fierce. Roundhouse is the... I have the problems with muscle memory like that. My brain gets into certain ways and it's really hard for me to break out of it for some strange, for some strange unknown reason. And I don't know why, so... Um, I'm not even dropping combos. That's not even a combo that I'm dropping. I'm just literally hitting the wrong button, so... Which I guess could be considered dropping. I did it again! I did it again! Jesus, what is my problem? Oh, that wake up towards Fierce again. <laughs> now I just want to burn it into my head. I'm just getting him to uppercut. I'm just trying to get him to uppercut now. Wow. Okay, good throw. Ah, he's trying to throw me a lot now. And I did the right one this time. I'm just going to spin the meter. I shouldn't have, but I just wanted to do it. So he got into a throw mode there. He, I, 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 he just for some other reason was like, okay, you're blocking my uppercuts. Now I just really need to throw you a bunch. So he threw me a bunch of times. It started working. And then right at the end, I shimmied him. I just walked backwards and you saw the whiff throw and I got the crouch fierce on him. So there you go. Uh, unknown, if I stream some vampire saber, I would just get destroyed. Like I am not 
particularly strong at that game. I'm not very good at it. I wish I was better. And I do double tap chopsticks. I do double tap uh, a lot. And uh, just a note for you guys, if you're watching this and you want to ask me a question, uh, please do at Jay Chenzor in the, in the chat so it's very much easier for me to see. So that'll be a lot easier for me to catch. Hey, what's up, Rom? What's going on? Um, but uh, I do double tap. That's just a habit from old arcade days uh, because you weren't always guaranteed that your button would work. But yeah, so if I do roundhouse one here, whoops, like this, oh, it'll hit, but if they're crouching, that's when it doesn't work. That's when it doesn't work. Whoops, scrub status, like this, then it'll whip. So what you actually want to do is always do the medium drill. Just always do the medium drill, and it's going to do more damage anyway. The reason why you want to do the medium drill, because watch, if I hit him with the medium drill, you're going to see the damage there is 90. If I do the roundhouse drill, the total damage is 100, but I'm canceling the first hit. So you want the most damage you can get, so you just want the one hit of the medium drill. And that is actually more damage. So I should always be doing medium drill in the super anyway. So, uh, okie doke. Okie doke is going for something really stupid. Just a gimmick, something that shouldn't work a lot. So here's an okie doke for Kami. Uh, EX Hooligan hits low, right? So whenever you do this, people are like, oh, I gotta be careful of the dive kick, or I've gotta be careful of the throw, I wanna crouch under that. So instead you do this, they wait for a second, they stand up and they get hit by this okie doke. And then I get a roundhouse juggle. So that's basically an okie doke, is like, just a cute little mix-up that you throw out every once in a while to catch someone unawares because they don't know about it, right? She used to have the okey-doke of into throw like that. That's an okey-doke, but they took that out. That doesn't work anymore. Uh, double tapping is not as useful in Street Fighter V as it was in Street Fighter IV or in older Street Fighters thanks to the automatic button repetition system put into the game. However, it doesn't hurt to double tap. And uh, one thing that I want to show you guys here really quick. Um, there are different ways to double tap. So I'm going to show you guys this real quick. Hang on a second. I'm going to go to the main cam here. The backgrounds are all going to be all weird and stuff like that. Oh, no, I don't have that one. Okay, let me do this really quick. Uh, uh, bear with me, guys. So I'm going to zoom that in really quick, just like this, okay? There's two ways to double tap. Uh, there's two ways to double tap is you just hit the same button twice with your finger like this. That's a way to double tap. Another way to double tap is to take your index and your middle finger and kind of do this. So what you're doing is you're, you're basically clawing at the button with both buttons. And if you just learn to space your fingers far apart enough, you'll end up double tapping. So um, you'll see, you'll know if you double tap correctly. Uh, off, on, okay. You'll know you double tap correctly if you see the button show up twice on the input. You see how there's two yellow punches there, right? Two medium punches. You can do it too fast so that the button doesn't actually come back up when you hit it with the next finger. So I do uh, middle index, I do middle index, Middle index, middle index, middle index. So I get two button presses. But you can do it too fast, and if you do it too fast, you get one button like that because the other finger hits the button before it ever comes up. So all you really did was hold the button down. So you just want to learn to space your fingers apart in a certain distance so that you always get the two inputs like this. If you put them too close to each other, you get one button like that. That means you're not double tapping. Uh, oh. Sorry guys. Let's do that again, shall we? <clears throat> I'm a scrub in so many different ways. All right, so if I double tap, you should be able to see that. You see two yellow punches, like that. That's if you know if you double tap correctly, like that. If you double tap too fast, it comes out as one button, like that, because 
you basically have never let the button come back up when you hit it with the second finger. So you only get one button that way, right? You don't need to see Cammy. You don't need to see Cammy in this scenario, so. Um, there you go. Uh, Iron God, the, the way that we've been doing it, I know David has done this, we've been playing mostly against subscribers online. So um, we do open lobbies for subscribers every once in a while. And just to make it fair to people, we're mostly playing subscribers, so I don't have any open lobbies yet for just a normal play just yet. But maybe I'll do that every once in a while. So, But uh, yeah, so that's a way to double tap. Another way to double tap is just double tap like this. But again, it's not as useful in, in, in Street Fighter V as it is in, um, as in older games and in Street Fighter IV because of large reversal windows and automatic double button input buffers and things like that so it's not as necessary so if you don't double tap you don't really have to be too concerned it's not it's not like I really need to learn this technique of double tapping it's very different than plinking plinking back in Street Fighter 4 you really really need to do it oh the Street Fighter 4 the KOF exhibition is on today yes I, I do want to watch that actually I absolutely will watch that but um you know what? Like, I, I, me and David do not see eye to eye on Laura. I think Laura's very underrated. I think she's really good in the right hands. Uh, David doesn't think that she's particularly strong, so um, I think she's pretty good. I think it's, she's pretty good. So uh, it's three a.m. It's I think it's three a.m. Eastern or something like that. But that should be midnight here. So. I really haven't been able to implement that new shimmy, but you know what? That one time I tried to do that shimmy, I walked forward and walked back, and I actually walked, the, the standing medium punch put me in the range to get thrown. So that might not be the right way to do a shimmy. Maybe I might have to do crouching medium punch, because crouching medium punch counter hit combos into crouching medium kick. So if I hit him in the throw startup, but yeah. Uh, is Flo here? Flo in the chat? Am I graced with the presence of Flo? No, I am not, so. Oh, wait, what, is he here? Oh, he is here! Hey, I am being graced by the presence of Mr. Flo. Uh, how do you record the AI to V reversal? Um, you can do it in the middle of the guard input. So you block it. Um, no, actually, I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it in just a second. Yay, Flo! How's it going, Mr. Ari Weintraub? What's going on? All right, well, let's fight this Ken. Let's see what he's gonna do. Is he a spaz Ken or is he a, a careful Ken? Right, so fireballs to start off, jumps. Yep. Okay, anti-air jab Ken. Uppercut. Yep. All right, dizzy. Watch this. Woo! Go for the reset, baby. Oh, my back medium punch did not work at that range. Okay, I gotta learn to use a different button then. I gotta learn to use like standing roundhouse instead. Oh, okay, using the hurricane kick to avoid. Now, jump back punch like that, I did that because it was at a weird range and you know what? If he kicked early and hit me, he hits me out of the air. I don't get damaged much, so it's a good, scared way to get out of things. So, I uppercutted with punch. And that is why I ate that like a hungry dog. Oh, crush counter. Interesting. He just likes to go for... I'm going to try to go for a shimmy here. Oh, he just jabbed. Okay, so the shimmy did not work. Jump at me from that range, I should be able to roundhouse you out of the air. See, I just do that jump from occasionally from a screen away just to make it look like I'm doing something, like I'm not trying to bait him to jump at me. Oops, that was not supposed to happen at all. Ah, uh, okay. It's so hard to counter that with rollback.
It's so hard to counter that with the uh, uh, roll back. <laughs> Look at all these guys. Dude, I don't even want to do. If I'm gonna play flow, I would rather do it like offline. I will fly up to NorCal and play flow offline, so he can body me offline, dude. <laughs> okay, fair enough, mom. A uh, mom TV. That's definitely um, that's definitely a fair call. Trying to shimmy in silver, probably not the best idea. So. Thank you for the follow. I didn't get to see what your name was, unfortunately. Okay, I'm just gonna uppercut if he jumps at me. Okay, he just got hit. Okay, now he's now he's scared to do a wake up uppercut, because I've conditioned him now. So Gah! I don't know what happened! Neither did he, because he just ate that jump in for no reason. Both of us are confused. Okay. Okay, he always goes for that. Oh, my uppercut won. See? Now he's scared to do wake up uppercut, so I got the meaty throw on him. So uh, I've read, I got that read a little bit into there. So okay, now what's gonna happen? He's got a meter, so that's kind of scary. Oh, standing light punch anti air. But I will do dive kick to throw off that timing. He doesn't do any quick rises. Oh, okay, that's a fair one. Okay, I just, I'm so bad at reading jumps. I am the absolute worst at reading jumps, and it's something I've got to fix. There we go. You win. Did I actually throw his uppercut, or was that a rollback? I'm not sure. Hmm, okay. Maybe he did do uppercut and I just got lucky and threw him out of it, so. Oh no, I leagued him down, poor guy. But I need to get myself into gold so I can get some better uh how do I suggest you I how do I suggest one copes with anxiety while playing ranked? It's really tough for me when I lose. I want to improve, but it's so tough to just enjoy losing as learning. And um hardest problem one of the hardest prob things to learn in fighting games is how to take that and uh, uh, yeah you know what sorry I'll, I'll get back to you I'll get back to you but I want to answer Impose's question I don't dive kick in neutral uh, I don't like it you're negative when you dive kick in neutral I, I don't like it it puts me in a really uncomfortable situation and I don't I don't believe in the crazy cami style that Kazunoko plays as much. I, I like the careful style. Thank you, Gucho101, for the, for following. Uh, also, okay, guys, just in case you know, there's also a subscription link on our page, and there's also a Patreon down there. If you feel like subbing to that, um, I'm going to get us a Twitch Alerts donation link up at some point in time as well. I haven't gotten that set up yet, but uh, there are those options. Yay, if you want to support us, if you like what we're doing, and um, if you are enjoying this. But... Back to the question, back, okay, Fabi won, I will get to what option select means uh, in a bit. So, um, the thing about losing, when you play this game online and you lose, um, there's, there's two ways to lose. Uh, thank you, old Dirt McGurk, for the follow. Uh, there's two ways to lose, right? There's a, there's a way to lose where you're just like, dang it, I lost, and then you get mad. Then there's a way to lose and be like, okay, this is why I lost. I'm okay with that. So when I lost to the Alex player earlier on stream, shout out Pillow of Wind for the follow. Um, when I lost to the Alex player earlier, a lot of people were like, oh man. Or when I lost to one of those players, they were like, James shouldn't be losing the silver players or whatever like that. It doesn't matter. The thing is, if you're, you have to look at it this way. If you can always see why you're losing, if you can figure out what it is that you're doing wrong 
which is not easy, I will give you that, okay? But if you can get to that point, then you're not actually losing because you're gaining knowledge and in a way that's a win. A lot of the times you're gonna lose matches, but it's gonna make you win in the long run. It's gonna make you a better player overall, right? So that's kind of the way you have to look at it. Now, the question really comes down to is, how do you, oh, thank you, William Navidson for the sub. Did the, did the thing pop up? Did the, did, the, did the thing pop up? I didn't see the image. I'm just gonna do it again. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, uh, William Navidson. Um, much appreciated for the for the subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, shishini. <laughs> I'll do that in my native language. Um, so the the thing about it is, you have to learn what it is that you're doing to lose, and you're not. I don't want to get too philosophical here, but learning to play fighting games is really about learning to deal with staring down deep into your own soul, right? You really have to be able to look at yourself. Thank you, uh, Pyromaniac, for the, for the follow. Thank you. Uh, oh, the, the, the thing is, oh, there we go. Thank you, Speedwagon, for the follow. But what you really have to understand is um, you have to be willing to look at what, what, how you play. What are the things that you could do, and let's do this really quick. Let's go back here really quick, and uh, let's go take a look at this match. Let's go take a look at this match here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if... Replay. Is there a way to like find your own replay? Like, how do I get to my own replays? Um, I've never done this before, to be honest with you, so this is kind of sad. All right. Um, uh, search using online ID. Uh, I'll just search for myself. All right, so um, fighter profile. Oh, I could just go to the fighter profile the normal way and see my... Where's my matches? My battle log, right? Uh, ranked matches. Here we go. Okay, so here's all these matches. I won, 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 won. I lost to this Ryu player. All right, let's 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 watch this. Let's watch this. Let's do it the right way, shall we? First of all, let me do something really quick. Uh, let me go to the options, let me turn this off, apply settings, let's go to square, let's go to battle log, ranked matches, and let's take a look at this match where I lost here against Smitten Kitten. Oh, this was the crate, this was the, no, you know what, I'd, I'd rather do the, um, oh, wait a minute, hang on a second, I'd rather do the... Alex match. Let's do that Alex match that I lost. Uh, here we go. This is the one. So let's go ahead and watch this replay, shall we? Uh, okay, add to replay list. Sure. Um, so now how do I get to replays? Dude, this is super confusing. Oh, okay, there we go. So I have this replay. So let's play this. Let's view the replay. I know, dude, this UI is so, so confusing. So one of the things that you have to do is you have to be willing to watch your own matches and start recognizing where the mistakes are coming in from. Now, this obviously takes a, a already sort of a high-level critical thinking towards the game to be able to do this. So it's going to be really hard at first when you play online and you're just going to lose and you get discouraged. It's really, really hard to keep going. But you really have to try to pay attention. Uh, let me see. What are the controllers here? Okay. Uh, key display. HUD display. Uh, how do I do this here? Oh, I am go. Okay. 
that's rude. So, okay, what, the, one frame forward, one frame back. Okay, so now, uh, I haven't done this before. I, I, I'm apologizing about this, that I have not done this before. Okay, it is, Jesus. The speed is triangle? No, that's pause and resume. Change playback speed is these. Here we go. Okay, so now we're at normal playback speed. Uh, okay, so that's the beginning. So let's pause here again. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. Uh, so I'm just doing this walk back and forth. So I tested him jumping. I got in once with the dive kick because I. Okay, so what I was trying to do was I was trying to see if he would anti air with jab. And I was like, oh, he didn't anti air with jab. Then I got in there, I dropped my combo. Now I'm playing this neutral game again here. I want to see what he does. And he's just hitting buttons like this. So I tried to get in and I got beat up by crouching medium punch. I got beat by crouching medium punch. And he's crouching medium punch me every time after I've done standing medium kick. I didn't even notice that. I didn't notice that. I could have taken advantage of that for sure. And see what's happening now is I'm engaging the Alex in this range that Cammy's not very good. This I can punish, but I just got hit by it because I'm a scrub. And that's fine. Empty jump into command throw. That's good on him. I wasn't expecting that. I'm going to get caught by that. That's one of those things where you're like, I didn't make a mistake. See, this, this is the thing, right? Fighting games aren't just about people making mistakes and, oh, I lost because I made a mistake. A lot of the times you're going to lose because the other person just did the right thing. And that's exactly what had happened here. He empty jumped and command grabbed me, and you know what? That's a mix-up. He got me with the mix-up. I'm just going to say, good stuff. You got me with the mix-up. Now he gets in there. I neutral jump. He jabs me out of the air. I go for a Hail Mary here. I try. Okay, so there I kind of confirmed him on standing up. And this is where I tried to do the hooligan, and then he jabs me out of it because hooligan is garbage in this game, right? So, um... Here we go, and then he gets the throw, good stuff on the reset. And so now, this is where I start to learn that he's kind of obsessed. Okay, I got that, I got, okay, I'm doing pretty good here. I don't really have anything that I feel like I'm doing wrong just yet, in fact. I feel like I'm playing this just fine. But there, I did the dive kick, I missed. I feel like this is the third game. I feel like this is the third game between us already. Um, but here we go, hit him, nothing happened, and so now I back off. I block that, I, I can't really do anything at that range. So now I'm trying to go in at him. I block that, I could punish that. So that's my fault right there that I did not have the reaction. You should be able to uppercut uh, with a, with roundhouse uppercut, should punish medium and heavy elbow slashes. But I did not punish it, I went with a crouching medium punch. Uh, yeah, exactly, at the highest levels, most losses just come down to who guesses or makes the better reads mistakes a lot of the time. So here we go. Um, and then he comes here. That's another mistake. So I see that reaction. I should be neutral jumping. You see how I've landed before he recovered? If I neutral jumped, I can punish. But my natural reaction is to jump backwards, so I cannot get the punish. So that's something I need to fix. I need to react to learn to react to Alex's uh, uh, stun gun with a neutral jump instead. Now I try to get in there. I try to challenge the low fierce again, but he hits me with it again. Now I come up and I wake up low jab. So I dared to do the wake up low jab because at that point in the round, it's usually, this is called desperation uppercut moment. Um, doing an uppercut when you're almost dead is like the logical thing to do because everyone is scared at this point. So instead I did wake up jab and when he blocks a jab, he's like, oh, he did an uppercut. Instead he did a crouch jab and while he's processing that, I went up and got the throw. So I'm gonna get the throw here and I'm gonna try to finish him off. And he did wake up super. This was the first game. Okay, this was the first game. So he did wake up super and I lost to that. And again, that's one of those situations where you can't, like you're gonna get mad because you're like, I can't believe he did a wake up super. What the hell? But you know what? You got hit by it. You should have been paying attention to the meter. It should have been something that you were thinking about, but you weren't thinking about it. You get hit by it. I'm not gonna be mad about it. I'm just gonna be like, really? You did that? But then you gotta move on. All right, get away from that. But again, I back jump instead of neutral jump. Okay, so, so again, he likes the crouching fierce. Even when I walk up close, I didn't pick up on that yet. 
Okay, so two low jabs in the throw. I'm just trying to play my game here. And I'm trying to play this uh, footsie game. And again, I'm trying to counter that slash with the crouching medium punch, which isn't going to work. Okay. And, and, and trying to engage Alex in footsie is just really bad for Cammy, And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I need to figure out a way to get myself in close. Now, if I was, now that I'm watching and analyze this, I should probably rush in. But if I rush in, he's going to crouch fierce me. I'm just going to get hit by crouch fierce like it happened later on, right? Oh, okay, it happened right there. Okay, see, I came to the same conclusion at the exact same time. He's playing defensive, time for me to go in, and he still triggered with the crouching fierce and hit me. So he's going to get the combo on me. So now I have to make that assessment that he likes to crouch fierce a lot. And I don't think I made that proper assessment because, uh, let's see, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit mind fucked right now because I was like, wow, he crouched fierce me. So I'm not doing anything right now. But uh, now, so I'm trying to use the dive kick to beat that crouch fierce. I didn't get the juggle after the EX dive kick. And then I don't know what the hell I did. That was just stupid on my part. Okay, so I get the wake up and I get the meaty here. And I just mistimed the meaty. I just mistimed the meaty, right? So I'm like, whoops, I mistimed the meaty. So I get this punish here. I try to save my meter because I want to get in there a little bit more. So I try to do this again, but good blocks on his part. He didn't get hit. And I get the throw. Here comes the comeback potential. I blocked that and I thought that was punishable. That was not. Okay. So a couple of things to really learn about that one is one, I didn't know the frame data and that cost me to lose, right? So not knowing the frame data, I was unable to punish the EX flash chop. For some of the reason I thought it was punishable, it was not, I lost. I also lost because I mistimed a meaty. So now that I understand that, now that I understand why I lost, I mistimed a meaty and I tried to punish something that wasn't punishable, that basically means um, I, it was my fault that I lost. It was absolutely my fault that I lost. I'm not going to be mad about it. I'm just going to be like, look, I, I lost. Lo losses happen, right? So if, if you come out of that, like, okay, what, what do I learn from that, right? Someone in the chat says that I respected him too much, right? Probably did. I probably absolutely did. And, and Cammy has the ability to disrespect people, and I respected him a lot. So that's something to take out of that. Uh, learn the flash shot timing. Learn what's punishable. That's another thing to take out of it. Learn my meaty light kick timing. If I take those three things out of that match, even though I lost, now I have an understanding that I won't make those mistakes again. So even though I lost, and I lost LP points or whatever league points, I technically won because now I'm not going to try to punish EX Flash Chop anymore and get myself killed. You know, I'm going to learn to try to, I'm going to go into training mode, try to practice my meaty light kicks. So if you're willing to go back and watch your own matches where you lose and someone on Twitter, I think it was Filipino man who said that uh, people are more willing to eat their own vomit than, um, than watch their losses. And <laughs> that is 100% true. It's so hard to watch your, uh, it's so hard to watch your losses. It's really, really hard to watch your own losses, but it's something that is super valuable. And Street Fighter V has that tool set. This didn't exist before. And this is really, really good stuff to get. This is actually really stuff to, that can really help you learn how to play very well, is watching your own losses. And if you're willing to take that kind of information about, now here's the thing, right? I, I learned a lot of those things from the replay, but I can pick up a lot of those things while I'm playing. So like I can be playing and I can be like, oh shoot, I missed this up. Oops, oh, okay, I gotta learn this. Oh, whoops, I need to do this. And so that's why when I lose online, I don't get frustrated. I don't get mad. And I, I don't get upset at myself because I realize that it was my mistake. I learned what to take from it. So. I'm going to be willing to, I, I know I gained something out of it. So even though I lost the match, I lost the points, I feel like I'm still in there, right? So, um, oh, dang, Filipino man is in the chat? What the heck? <laughs> I didn't even know he was here. Um, um, 
but yeah, so what you, what you learn then is that you're learning things so that if you concentrate too much on winning right now, you will never get better. You will never get better if you're trying to win right now. We've already seen a couple of matches now where I've just kind of like started getting a little bit sloppy on purpose because I just want to test something or I just want to do something goofy. And that's fine because I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to pick up information. I want to learn how to use this. So like I've been going to the standing light kick throw a bunch more than I probably should. But I'm just trying to learn how to implement it in battle as much as I can. So um, that's fine. And, and so even though I might lose some matches trying to implement these things, it's going to help me with more wins in the, in the long run. So if you're playing only for current wins, you're not going to get better. The question, of course, thanks you, Nemesis, for the follow. Um, uh, one of the things that I want to bring up, though, is that, you know, you're going to get discouraged. It's frustrating. Sometimes the best thing to do is just stop take a step back and just calm down and come back to it later. Like forcing yourself to play, the more mad you get, the worse you're gonna play. The more frustrated you get, the worse you're gonna play. The more discouraged you get, the worse you're gonna play. Sometimes it's better off just to take a step back. And the other thing too is, let's say you don't understand frame data, which to be honest, most people don't. Most people don't understand frame data. So what I'm going to do here, if you lose a match and you're not sure how something works, a lot of times you're like, man, I didn't know that wasn't punishable. And then you forget about it and then you move on and that's the end of it. Now, if I was actually playing online by myself and I was just chilling by myself, I would come here, I would pick Alex. Obviously, I have frame data apps on my phone. I have frame data apps on the web page. Uh, you can sometimes being mad uh, makes you better. Yes, but it's very rare. It's very rare. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to record the Alex dummy to do this, and then hold down back afterwards. Okay. So now I'm going to put them on playback. I'm going to turn that on. And uh, I'm going to reset. The Actually, you know what? Let me reset this and let me start over again. Let me go record. Hold down back afterwards and block. Okay? So now that I've recorded that, what I'm going to do is come out here and start it again. Okay, I didn't block it, right? So let's try a faster button. Okay, he, I couldn't hit him. He blocked it. Let's try a faster button. I couldn't hit him. Let's try a faster button. I can't hit him. I can't hit him with my low jab. Now I know this. So now I know this even without frame data, even without all that information. I came here and tested it. I've done this a lot. I'll play online matches. Something will happen. I'm like, wait, I didn't understand that interaction and I'll come and test it. So there you go. Um, if it's minus two, that means it, uh, you can't punish it. Uh, if it's minus four, I should be able to block it with the crouch light punch. Yeah, no, it's the elbow that's minus four. Yeah, EX flash chop is safe. But now I know it's my turn, so... I know that I can apply pressure afterwards and such, but that's the way it works. So when you play something in... When you play online, and this is also a good way to just kind of gather yourself as well. Turn off fight request, test stuff out, and then you gain that information and now next time you should be able to punish it properly or learn that you can't punish it properly. And then you can come back here, set up the network fight request, turn it back on and everything like that, and then go back into your matches. But um, honestly, The best way to not get too discouraged afterwards is really try to understand how to learn the game. And it is one of the hardest things to do. Thank you, Foxy, for the follow. Um, it is very, very hard. And uh, I, I've gotten salty too. There's been sequences where I'll lose a bunch of matches in a row and I'm just like super frustrated and I keep playing when I shouldn't be playing and I lose all these points and it's really, really terrible. 
Um, but if you if you can squeeze information out of all your matches, even the ones that you lose, if you're willing to go watch your losses and not you know want to beat your head over with over with a baseball bat after you watch your losses, um, it's very important to do that because you can get a lot of information just by watching your own fights and understanding what it is that you're supposed to do. So. Yeah, okay, so Ebi uh, uh says, the only thing that makes me salty is lag. If you lose the lag, there's nothing to be mad about because lag sucks and it's stupid and it's completely illegitimate that you lost to that. Yeah, you can be salty about it because it's stupid. Shouldn't be there, but you know what? Say la vie, you can't really get yourself that mad, so. Um, you can't punish it online properly with Ryu, have to use less optimal stuff. Right, so if you don't have the ability to, so here's a problem. There's a problem that a lot of people have when they try to play this, when they watch too many streams. And it's because it's a video game. There's something about stuff, oh my. I don't know how to fight jury. I have never fought a jury before. Uh, Run, I will get back to your comment in just a second. Let me fight this jury and find out what's gonna happen. Let's find out what happened. <laughs> dude, Marvel 3 Online is terrible, dude. I could not Marvel even do one. that. Alright, well, I don't know what this character does. I have no- I wanted to focus that! Holy crap! Don't forward dash after the throw, it's always a bad idea. Oh, oh I have no idea what just happened there. Okay, very aggressive jury, very aggressive jury, and oh my god, what is happening? Well, you know what? That jury player just really wanted me to get back and answer Run's question up there. So let's 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 go back and address this here. Okay, <clears throat> let's address this here. This is oh, it was me. It was me. I disconnected. It was my fault. It was my fault. My connection was bad, and now if I rage quit again another two times in the middle of uh, in the next couple of hours, I'm going to get banned. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's talk about this really quick. Let's talk about Run. So he said, um, you know, he tried to practice and when he plays online, you know, Vega did a super, he tried to go for the optimal punish and it didn't work. There's already enough pressure on people trying to learn the game to just play the game. For some unknown reason, when you watch, um, when you watch players play online, because it's a video game, when you see someone go for optimal punishes, you see Tokido do something like towards fierce, crouching fierce, V cancel, stand roundhouse, light kick, short hurricane, in the super, you're like, I need to learn that, I need to do that, right? That's basically the same thing as watching. Um, like, uh, let's say Stephen Curry shoot like three half court shots and he makes it and you're like, oh, you know what? I want to play like Stephen Curry, so I'm going to learn that. You know, you're learning the wrong things at the, at the wrong time. So what you really need to do is stop worrying about optimal punishes. So for me, for example, I'm at a point where I should be optimizing my punishes against uppercuts. And you saw me, I was trying to learn to do that by doing the standing roundhouse crush counter into the, you know, all the stuff and, and I, I, you know, get the optimal damages. But if you're not at that point yet, who cares? If you're not at that point yet, crouching medium punch, drill. Low forward, drill. If that's what you're getting, that's fine. Play that way. Play with the less damage. Play with the suboptimal combo. Are you going to lose because you did suboptimal combo? Yeah, 
there's going to be times that you're going to lose barely by a little bit that you know if you had done the optimal combo, you would have won. But that's not what you want to do. You just want to learn how to play the game. And again, in that situation, if you lost to someone and they have this much life left and you didn't land your optimal combo, you can walk away from that saying, if I did my optimal combo, I would have won. If you can get a series of games where you are losing because of the sub-optimal combo and that's the only reason why you're losing, you're, you've graduated to the point where it's time for you to learn the optimal combo. But if you're losing because you can't play the game properly and the optimal combo isn't going to help you anyway, it's time to not worry about the optimal combo. It's really all about learning how to play the game properly. So don't worry about optimal combos right away. Just learn to punish things, learn to play the game, learn to understand footsies. And then that way, if you're, yeah, exactly. Amazing Chess says he uses simple punishes because punishes his execution is great, isn't great, and he'd rather get some punish than no, no punish, right? So that's exactly what it is. So don't worry about the optimal stuff. That comes later. Once you get to the point where you're comfortable enough to play the game, then you can start incorporating optimal stuff. And then you're going to lose a bunch of games because you're going to be dropping optimal combos all day. But that's fine because you've already understood that you're now losing because of optimal combos. If you're going for optimal combos right away, you're losing because you don't know how to play the game and you don't know how to do optimal combos. Take care of one before you go for both. So once you've established that you can play the game and you're losing only because you're not landing the optimal combos, start learning the optimal combos. You're going to lose games because you're dropping the optimal combos because you're not used to doing them in the matches. And now you might get scared and go back to your non-optimal combos because you feel like you can win better that way. No, 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 no. Keep going for the optimal combos. Just force it into your brain. Force it into your brain like I did. I kept doing standing fierce as a crush counter, which didn't crush counter. And I just kept forcing myself to go for the standing roundhouse. And uh, I could have just went back to strong fierce in the drill, but I wanted to force myself into getting the right optimal combo. So keep forcing yourself to doing that. You're going to lose a couple of games, but if you know you're losing because you're dropping optimal combos, you can't be mad. You can't be salty about your losses because you know exactly why you're losing. If you're playing the game right and you're only losing because you're dropping optimal combos, you're in a great spot. You are really, really in a uh, great spot. That means you, you're, 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 in a, you're in a place where as soon as you learn those optimal combos, you're going to be winning a bunch more, and that's super cool. So again, it's, 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 it's one of those things that don't try to learn everything all at once. It's, it's good to focus on small things at a time. So if you're, if you're already having trouble just anti-airing properly, if you're having trouble playing footsies, if you're not good at the meaty game, um, that's just going to be a problem right away. Um, you can't sit there and tack on optimal combos because now when you see someone miss an uppercut, you're going to walk up to them and be like, man, oh no, I need to do my optimal combo. What is it? Oh, I dropped it. And you're, dude, that's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Take it one at a time. You see them with an uppercut. Do low strong drill. In your brain, you're like, that wasn't optimal, but it's okay. But it's okay. And then just keep playing. And that's what you got to do. And so, um, and of course, depending on the game, there's going to be different things to learn. Um, okay, okay. So Run's saying that he's, he's kind of there. Uh, honestly, it's execution nowadays, and sadly, randomness from peeps. Okay. Well, you, you've seen how I've been dealing with randomness, right? I, I beat most of the random. You will lose the random every once in a while. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's just like one of those things that you're just going to have to deal with occasionally once in a while. But uh, let me go to Rashid. Rashid of the Turbulent Wing. Uh, thank you, Dominguez, for the subscription. Uh, then at that point, if it's mostly just execution that you're dropping, that's a good thing. You're in a good place. You're in a very good place. So here's what I'm going to recommend to you, Run. This is how I've always taught people to practice execution. Everyone's problem with practicing execution is they do this. Okay, got the link. Uh, let's do this link. Okay, got the link. Uh, oh, hey, let me set them to quick rise so I can do this faster, so I can practice this. 
Okay, I've got this. Now, now let me practice towards roundhouse, low strong drill. Okay, I missed it, right? Um, so let's try to do this again. Okay, I got it. Let's practice it again. Okay, let's practice it again. Let's practice this combo again. This is how most people practice execution. And this is the wrong way to practice execution, okay? If you are dropping execution in the middle of battle, it's because the opponent is not standing there for you to get your combo on and calmly doing that. The way that you're going to want to learn to do this execution in training mode is to back dash, forward dash, do it, do the combo, jump, neutral jump, jab, strong, towards roundhouse, do it. Come up, walk up, uh, low forward drill, dash up, strong, back off, shimmy him, do it. Uh, with an uppercut, uh, uppercut, dash up, then after strong, now do it. Now jump, uh, dive kick at him like this, jab him. Ooh, that was crazy. Um, come up here, dive kick him, jab him, towards roundhouse, now do it. Uh, go here, on the other side. Make stuff up that doesn't even make any sense. Like, no one would ever do this in a Taurus roundhouse and then do it. But, the thing about, the reason why you do it this way is because you're putting yourself into weird situations, right? Dash, 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 Taurus roundhouse. Okay, I dropped it. Uh, back dash, forward dash, Taurus roundhouse, and then do it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get yourself to understand how to pull out this combo when your hands aren't ready for it. Like, you, if you're sitting here like, okay, I need to do this combo. Your brain is ready for it, your hands are ready for it, everything is just in there in optimal state. Just do it. Even do towards, then even do towards roundhouse, towards roundhouse, and do the combo. And I dropped it there, right? So you just want to build up that kind of um, ability. Yeah, uh, great term for Yaguchi. Great term. Strengthening recall. That is a great way to, to state that. You are strengthening your recall by doing all sorts of craziness first and then throwing it out there in the middle and landing the combo. That now makes it so that it's much easier for you to pull out that kind of thing in your brain. And so that's good, that's good, that's a good thing. Even set him to not quick rise and do like drill towards strong, towards strong, towards strong, just like just make stuff up that's not even practical, but just get yourself to the point where you're used to that, so. Uh, he fought a match today, he kept crossing me up for up close, you got blown up. Uh, jab better cry, I crushed it. Yeah, uh, cross ups are super good in this game. Um, so he fought an Ash that kept crossing him up from up close, he got blown up, called him to a battle lounge, he got his anti-air jab timing better, and crushed him. Um, here's the thing, right? Um, even that situation might not be uh, optimal because if you're learning to anti-air his cross-up with the stand jab, which isn't super reliable, I would kind of want to say that maybe the problem is that the game that you're playing is allowing the Nash to get that cross-up. You found a solution that can solve the cross-up problem, but in my opinion, the problem is that he is in range to cross you up a lot. Now a lot of people will do this, and this is super effective on low levels of play because I get beat up by this too. And you want to learn to maybe not even just get into that situation. Go watch the replays, find out how he gets into the range to cross you up all the time, and that's something you might want to look at. But then if you know that he's going to do this and if he jumps, forward dash, get out of there. You don't even want to deal with this mix-up where you want to try to anti-air jab him and stuff like that. Oh, real standing jab is amazing. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, I also do jump back jab to him out of the air because then you just kind of reset the situation as well. Um, oh, so he had no plan. <laughs> okay, he just jumped a lot. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine.
But it'd still be interesting to go into the match and see how he got into range to cross you up all the time. It's still good information. It's still good information to pick up on that. Now, um, is there anything that you wanted me to uh, expand on a little bit more, uh, Run? Because I kind of wanted to talk about one more thing before I, before I uh, finish tonight's session here of games. Uh, the main thing is that when I first played Kami, um, I was losing a lot, I was getting mad, and it's because I did not understand how to play the character properly, I thought she sucked, and at one point in time it worked to me, it, it, everything made sense to me. And what, it, what was it that I was practicing? Well, the main thing that I practiced was that I know Kami's foot speed is really good, so getting in close is what you want to do. The second thing I really made sure to learn was to find a way to get my meaty timings properly. That's how I found dash up standing medium punch. Right, so, so basically you drill, anytime you hit with the roundhouse drill, forward dash in the standing medium punch will be all three frame normals. So now I just gave myself a, a, a way to beat that. And I put them on back recovery, if I do the same thing, I miss and they'll beat me up, so I just know to wait a little bit and do it. And yeah, it doesn't cover both options. I have to do a guess. That's fine. The key is that now if I expect him to back roll, I know what to do. If I expect him to quick rise, I know what to do. And if he doesn't do any rise, so if he does, does not obey hashtag rise up, I came up with a system to beat that too. So medium, medium, medium. So if I do medium punch, medium punch, medium kick, medium punch, I have a way to perfectly time and beat the regular wake up timing uh, three frame jabs. So what I did, I didn't use those in the match, obviously I haven't really implemented that into my gameplay, but I have something, right? So. What this allowed me to do was now I under I was really honestly losing because I could not get my meaty timings properly. So I really shored up my meaty timings and then that helped me a lot automatically. That automatically helped me because that made sure now that Cammy's strength is once she gets in on you, she gets really good pressure. And I wasn't getting that pressure, and so I would lose. And that's why I thought she was bad, because I would force myself to have to play this neutral game all the time, and that's not necessarily the right way to play her. Once you get in, you need to take advantage of it. So there you go. That, that's one of the things that helped me get better with Cami is not just like some epiphany, like, oh, this is how she's supposed to play. It was more, look, I'm not landing my meaties. I'm not taking advantage of this character. Shout outs to High Flyer for the follow, thank you. I'm not taking advantage of my character. I need to make sure I can take advantage of my character. So I went and learned the meaty timing and that automatically made my cami a lot better. So um, that's just uh, one lesson that I wanna talk about. That instantly made it so that I started understanding how to play cami a lot better, so. Uh, two questions I wanted to answer real quick is uh, how do you practice against shimmies? Uh, very, very easy way to practice against shimmies. Uh, Street Fighter V is great. Okay, Player recording. Let's do this. Uh, let's record player one. Dash up, dash up. Strong throw. Okay. Now let's record. Uh, let's re record slot two. Oops. Now let's record slot two. All right, I'm just gonna do that, okay? And then uh, let's record, oh, hang on, let me do something really quick. Turn, okay, they're all off. And then uh, what else could I try to do? Um, let's record slot three to B. Oops, no, no, that, 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 I just ruined that. All right, let's start all over again. So I'm gonna run strong, whoops, I'm going. I picked a bad character. Let me pick a different character. 
I don't know Rashid very well. Let me pick a different character. <laughs> Let's pick Karen, shall we? Oh, Karen is a really good character to practice this stuff on. Uh, Rod CU, the best training dummy is any character because every character you want to learn something against. Do not get stuck on one training dummy. Be willing to switch around on training dummies because then you can practice different things. Alright, so let's start again. Uh, let's do this restart battle. Let's go here. Uh, let's record the dummy. Let's record slot one into dash dash strong. Uh, scrub. Crouching strong throw. Okay, now let's record two to be dash, dash, crouching, strong, walk up, back, and fierce. Now let's record three as dash, dash, crouching, strong, crouching, strong, standing, strong. Now let's record number four as dash, dash, crouching, strong, crouching, whoops, let's do that again. Dash, dash, crouching, strong, crouching, strong, throw. Now what you're going to do here is set them all to on. Pay no attention to the giant number in the middle of the screen. Set the dummy to playback control, uh, to playback recording, and go to random battle. I just got shimmied, because I tried to throw. Restart. I just got shimmied again. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, I just got thrown because now I'm blocking. So now you set up the shimmy situation, right? So how do you get past this? Jump back OS. Right? So honestly, this is the best way to practice against the shimmy is to set this up, but the throw, jump back OS will beat the throw or shimmy, but that might not be what you want to practice. If you actually want to practice how to fight the shimmy, just put yourself in this situation right now with this training dummy. Yeah! Oh my god! But now, here's the important thing to take out of this, right? Here's the important way to, to, to think about this. You notice that I know the computer is only going to do those few options. And the shimmy is still working on me. It's blowing me up really badly. What this means to you is that the shimmy, there is no solution to the shimmy or throw game. There is no solution. Jump back throw OS is one right now. But let's ignore that for now. Let's say Jump Back Throw OS didn't exist in this game and you're really trying to learn how to fight the shimmy. There really is no real way to uh, beat the shimmy. Yeah, someone's right. Uh, Rift Tripper is right. You can do like that. You can hit the crouching medium punch like that. You can poke in the middle of there, right? But now let's add a new one. Let me do that again. Okay, now I've added that in there, right? So if I turn that back on, let me just show you what that does. Now if I think that they're going to shimmy and I hit a button, I'm going to get counter hit. So that's the third option in there, and that's why it's dangerous to try to hit the shimmy, because you're just going to get counter hit, right? So now I'm going to set the dummy back here. Turn them all on. So now guaranteeing... See, now I'm going to get hit by that. So now I have just even another thing to think about. See, that'll work on four out of the five settings, but that just means he's going to go for the frame trap. As a human, you would go for the frame trap more often. So the real answer is how do you defeat the shimmy is you don't. If you get put into a situation where you are in the shimmy mix-up, you did something wrong, don't be in that position. 
that's how I honestly believe the game works. This is why corner position is so bad. There's a lot of characters who can't keep you in this shimmy mix-up. Sometimes it's better to take the throw because if uh, if I throw you, like let's say let's say she throws me, throws me, and I quick rise. You see how she can't shimmy me anymore, right? She gets nothing off of that forward throw. So in those situations, sometimes if you're in the middle of the screen, you're better to eat the throw and just live and come back another day and fight another day. However, if you're in the corner, that's not going to work. So in my opinion, if you're in the corner, you already did something wrong. If you're getting shimmied, you already did something wrong because that's your punishment for getting put into that situation. That's how you have to see uh, when you're in that shimmy situation. Uh, the opponent is getting rewarded for doing something right to be able to put you in the shimmy situation. That's how you have to look at it. It is now you are in a true mix-up, and if they mix it up properly, there's no one right answer to solve all of it. So a lot of the times, if you're getting shimmied all the time, it's not that you need to figure out how to beat the shimmy. You need to figure out how to beat the, the situation that, Jesus, the situation that puts you into the shimmy. That's the super important thing. Uh, I did commentate Street Fighter V at Wednesday Night Fights uh, Iron God. I did. Especially this last week because not a lot of people were there. But yeah, so you don't want to be in that situation. Yes, Bill Hicks is absolutely right. This is why I think Ken is top three in the game. Because he gets you into the corner instantaneously off of everything he does. So, I think that Ken is top tier. I think Cammy is really strong as well because her low forward drill puts me into good situations. Look at this, two drill combos and I went from one corner to the other. So Cammy's like Ken light, which is why now I honestly, I used to think she sucked. Now I do think she's like top five, potentially. Maybe six best or something like that. So honestly, if you're getting into the position where you're shimmied, it now is, it's just you and your instinct. How many times has he gone for the throw? How many times has he gone for the frame trap? How many times has he gone for the shimmy? It's a true mix-up. There's no real answer to it. And see, I tried to do the jump back throw OS and that instant hit actually hit beat me. So to be honest with you, there's no, I don't want to make anyone believe that there's an answer to the shimmy because there's not. It's a real mix-up. If there was an answer to the shimmy, the shimmy would be useless. So uh, the shimmy or throw mix up. So that's why it's there and it's really good. Jesus, what the hell is going on? Oh, my, my brother's texting me a bunch of stuff. So, so there you go. That's the answer of how you, um, that, how you beat the shimmy, you don't. But the, the, the question was, how do you practice against the shimmy? And I just showed you right there. I've recorded five different scenarios that are really, really good uh, sh uh, ways to practice against the shimmy. But what you really have to understand is, that these are, this is what you have to deal with, and that you're not always going to be correct on this situation. If your opponent is smart, you're going to lose. And, and that's just the way it works. Shout outs to Spiness uh, for the follow there. So there you go. Um, that's how you can practice against it, but you'll never get to a point where you can beat the shimmy, because the shimmy is designed to be unbeatable, essentially. Again, if you are getting shimmied all day, you're either one, fighting against Ken, or two, you're doing something wrong in the game to be put in that position to be shimmied. So there you go. Uh, yes, a Rift Tripper says it, uh, Crouch Tech beat shimmy and throw in Street Fighter 4, so everything was frame trap in Street Fighter 4. But in this game, now Crouch Tech doesn't work, and so now that's why shimmy has gotten that much more powerful in this game. Um, why is it called the shimmy is because Gutex did it first a lot with oh, I mean, he was one of them who popularized it on a stream with Balrog He always did it and everyone started calling it the Gutex shimmy eventually became the Balrog shimmy And then it just got shortened into the shimmy. So there you go. That's that's basically how shimmy is. It's not a broken mechanic It's it's not broken at all uh, Shimmy is a absolutely fair mechanic. I mean it's if, if shimmy is a broken mechanic then so is Wake up, uppercut, or meaty, because that's the same thing. That's a that's an unwinnable that's an unwinnable situation. You're either gonna guess right or you're gonna guess wrong. Shimmy is the same thing. You're gonna guess right.
where you're gonna guess wrong and you just have to understand how your opponent plays which is why Street Fighter 5 is more about playing the person than it is about playing the game. Crouch tech kinda sucks. I don't like crouch tech and it is part of the game though. It's part of the game because it's Street Fighter 5. It's, 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 it's Street Fighter 5. Every fighting game is going to have a different personality, and Street Fighter 5's personality is the shimmy. Street Fighter 4's personality was the frame trap. So that's, that's kind of how you have to look at it. It's Whatever's part of the game is part of the game, honestly. Um, so, uh, um, uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's the answer on, how, on, on what you do about shimmies. And, and finally, the last question I wanted to address Someone asked me, how do you get the computer to V-reversal so you can practice against V-reversals? Um, the best way to do that is to record the training dummy like that. So basically, neutral jump, land, block, towards, and all three punches like that, okay? So now if I set them back to play, I get him to do that. Ooh, I didn't know that happened. Interesting. I was always wondering why people didn't just uppercut it. Now I know. Because it's invincible. But that is a way to uh, practice against it. go. Ow! Well, there you go. So that's all you have to do to uh, practice against uh, to, to practice against V-reversals. Uh, if you want to practice punishing it on jumping, then what you want to do is just learn to record the timing properly. For example, like do neutral jump, wait, block, then three punches, like that, right? So now when I play back, I see the neutral jump. Oops, I did that too fast. So neutral jump, wait. Okay, too fast. I'll just wait till she lands. And now you can practice against it, right? So it takes a little bit of futzing around with, but you can learn to deal with it. But that's just an example right there of how you can learn to practice against it that way. So uh, that's how you can practice against V reversals in this game. So. <laughs> Uh, v reversaling a V reversal. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Oops. There you go. So V reversaling a V reversal. So there you go. Um, but uh, that is that is how you practice against V reversals. So, all right. Uh, Shimmy is not a mechanic. It's not a, a, a mechanic, but it's a strategy in the game. Frame trap is not a mechanic, but it's part of the game. That, that's just the way you have to see it. Uh, the game doesn't... So the beautiful thing about fighting games, and this is going to be my uh, poetic statement of the day, the beautiful thing about fighting games is that the player has so much control, the game rarely gets to tell you what the game is. It's really the players who get to dictate what the game is. So, safe jump option selects, it's not a mechanic in the game, but it's a thing. Shimmies, not a mechanic in the game, but it's a thing. Frame traps, not a mechanic in the game, but it's a thing. The players get to determine what a fighting game is. The fighting game doesn't really get to say, and that is the beautiful part of fighting games. So. There you go. You know what? I mean, look, I'm going to call it a mechanic just because we've determined that now this is a mechanic in the game. This is what we're going to play. What, what um, Uterus is actually, what Uterus 416 is saying is that it's not actually built into the game. It's not an actual mechanic. At this point in time, the people who have played the game have turned it into a mechanic. 
The shimmy is now a mechanic in Street Fighter V because it is something that is very much a part of the game. So that's why I keep calling it a mechanic. Um, in the actual literal sense of the word, it is not a mechanic. But the way that people have played the game, we have turned it into one. There you go. So. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm probably gonna call it quits for the night. Um, and uh, probably go ahead and stop now, and uh, and uh, be done for the day. So, uh, is there any last questions? Uh, thank you to to Grim. Jeez, I can't even read that. I need to open up my window. Uh, to Grim, to Grimy. Thank you to Grimy for the follow. Uh, also, want to give out once again a shout out to uh, William Davidson, who earlier, an hour earlier, sub subscribed. So, thank you very much. If you guys are enjoying this, um, it really, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, it does help a lot uh, for you guys to sub, to donate to the Patreon. We also have a PayPal donation link on our page. It does help us a lot. It helps us keep going and doing a lot of this stuff. Uh, I'm using a lot of donation money to buy a new air conditioning unit pretty soon so that uh, I'm not going to sit here and sweat like a pig right now without the air. Because if I turn on the air conditioner right now, you can hear this thing is just like, it's like a jet engine basically. And uh, it definitely helps us a lot. So um, uh, for studio stuff, and it helps us too, because uh, a lot of us, you know, are trying to make, you know, a career out of commentary and out of streaming and such like that. Uh, Steve and Steve and I, you know, we're all trying to, you know, hopefully maybe do this as a, an actual job at some point in time. So any donation does help. Uh, I'll probably start setting up all the donation information, like scrolling donation information like a lot of people have uh, for their streams. But any donation, no matter how small, is very helpful and very much appreciated. So. Um, but I am going to get um, a quieter air conditioning unit so that it's not this loud um, and hopefully it'll be better so <laughs> and such like that yeah <clears throat> so uh, thank you guys again uh, at one point in time I will set up a twitch alerts donation link as well which you can donate so uh, if you guys have any other questions about anything please let me know and um, uh, if you have any last second questions that you'd like me to answer here on stream, uh, if, um, if William Davidson is still in the stream and since he subscribed, if he wants me to sing any particular song that he wants me to sing, oh wow, cheers, thank you, thank you Free Gucci. Um, if there's any, uh, if you want me to sing, uh, I will absolutely, uh, I will do that for anyone who subs. I will straight sing a song of your choice if I know it, if William Davidson is still in the chat. Uh, uh, the new V-Trigger tech. I don't know what you're referring to, so comrade, actually. I don't know. Uh, so Joe, Joe Dominguez asks, what's the input for Jump Back OS? Jump Back OS is basically, oh, you don't actually have Cheers? Oh, thanks, Furiguchi. Thanks, man. Um, the input for Jump, Back, uh, for Jump Back OS is Crouch Block for like two frames. It's basically Crouch Block for two frames or so, like just enough. Like, so after the crouching medium punch, block for just like the shortest amount of time, then immediately jump backwards and input throw. Like that. That's basically the input for that. So let me record this one again. Oops. All right, so I recorded that one again. So if I turn them back on, all of them back on, what you'll see here is that, um, 
If she throws, I if she throws before I jump, I tech the throw. If she tries to shimmy me, I jump away. If she frame traps, I block in time. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna force her to do it because the randomizer on this thing is really weird. Because you block for that half a second, if she does frame trap, you block. So the throw OS covers all those three options. See? So I did that very late. Now there is ways to blow up the jump back OS, but I won't get into that right now. So there you go. Uh, yes, it works if you neutral jump as well. It works as you neutral jump, but what will happen is that for a lot of characters like Ken or you, they'll see you neutral jump when they whiff their throw, and then they uppercut you. That's why the shimmy, the throw OS doesn't work well in the corner, because if you jump backwards, they can uppercut you. You'll actually see it once people get in the corner, they actually throw OS by jumping forward. Neutral jump is usually the worst option, because most characters can recover from a throw whiff and hit you with an uppercut in time. So. On a perfectly meaty timed normal, if you back roll, then input V trigger, there's supposed to be one frame of, invinc of invincibility that eats the last active frame of the meeting. That's new to me, so comrade. I, I, I don't know anything about that. So, uh, uh, actually, Rift Tripper, a lot of people can punish jump back. A lot of people can jump back, uh, punish the jump back. You just have to know it. And uh, uh, people are developing OSs for it. Javits has already set up a bunch of OS's to beat it with like Balrog and Mika and Laura. Uh, Haitani just tweeted one out that works for Nakali. So you can definitely punish jump backs. It's going to be the next level of the game. People are going to start punishing jump back throw OS. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, but there you go. Um, any other questions from anybody? Uh, jump block, oh, the jump, the jump oh, back OS is effective because it covers all the options. It covers all the options that, that, that are involved in the frame trap shimmy throw game. The frame trap shimmy throw game is kind of the core of Street Fighter V, so jump back throw OS handles that. The reason why I don't mind the jump back throw OS is because you actually are going backwards and you're putting yourself into the corner. Eventually you run out of real estate, so you know what? I like that. I like that mechanic in the game. I like that that's kind of accidentally balanced itself. That if you jump backwards, you just put yourself in the corner where now the jump back throw OS no longer works. So if you do it once and you jump backwards, now you have to fight for that space back. Otherwise you're going to get body. Shout outs to Movable for the follow there. So that's uh, the information I have on that one. So Again, if you guys can, please donate to the Patreon, donate on the PayPal as well, or subscribe. So there you go. Um, any support is appreciated. Uh, it helps myself, David, Steve, and Steve. It helps all of us together. Uh, and hopefully you're enjoying a lot of the content. Steve streams a lot on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, I'm sorry, Sayjam streams on Wednesday afternoons. Steve does Tasty Tuesdays. He streams a lot on Tuesday mornings before the Tuesday show. Of course, we all do Tuesday show uh, as well. Our YouTube has a lot of cool uh, stuff going on over there as well. A lot of cool video tech and all sorts of other things like that. So, Oh, and uh, Chiragon subscribed as well. Thank you, Chiragon. He subscribed four minutes ago. So thank you very much for that. So. So shout outs to all you guys out there. So, all right. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a good night. I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.